All right, now we're going to talk about domain or uh, graphs of inverses. And yeah, sure enough, it's going to involve domains and ranges. So the graph of an inverse function will always be a reflection about the diagonal y equals x line, because on either side of the y equals x line, the x and the y inputs switch places. So for example, take our point 4 comma 2. If you flip that around, over here is going to be the reflection of that point. It's going to be 2 comma 4. Sure enough, the x and the y are going to reverse their relationships. So that's what that says. Um, and as an example here, as an example, we have the graph of y equals x to the third and y equals the cube root of x, which takes, uh, which are inverses of each other. Okay, so now let's kind of put everything we've been talking about together with a graph of one. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to start with an original function we're going to figure out the domain and range of this function. And maybe to do that, we might need to graph it. And then we're going to calculate the related inverse. And then we're going to graph both the original function and the inverse. So that's the next few slides. Um, so domain and range. Well, first things first, let's, let's, uh, let's use this prior slide to do a little bit of math here. Well, I see that I have a square root function that's just been transformed or moved around, shifted horizontally and vertically. We know that outside changes uh, shift vertical direction in the direction we expect. So subtracting three is gonna move our square root graph down by three. And inside changes do the opposite of what we expect in the horizontal direction. So positive two is gonna move us to the left by two, left by two. So we're gonna draw reasonably accurate, here we go. Uh, we need to. We need enough room to go down and and uh, left though. So reasonably accurate. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Square root. Original square root. Zero, zero, one, one, and four, two. And that black line is y equals the square root of x. So now for every single one of those points, we are going to go down three. One, two, three. Okay, so we'll go down three. And then we will move to the left two. So we better go one, two, and we'll move over to the left two. And we will start our new function, which I'll graph the, the transform, transformed function over here. That, that, and something like that. We'll just call it good for there. Because from, from here, we have enough to kind of get a rough graph and we can come up with our domain and range. So for our green function, the domain is going to be inclusive, negative two, all the way up to infinity. And our range for our green graph, well, I'll do that in black, that's gonna start at negative three and go up all the way, because that graph doesn't really appear to be going up fast, but it is always increasing in height and it will get to positive infinity. So let's write that out on the next page. The domain starts at negative two, so negative two inclusive, and it heads up to positive infinity. And the range starts at negative three and heads up to positive infinity. We know that domains and ranges for inverses are reversed. Inputs become outputs and outputs become inverses, uh, outputs become inputs. So the range of our original function becomes the domain, the input for my inverses. So the input is, without even finding our inverse, we know the domain and range of our inverse negative three to infinity and range input of the other guy negative two to infinity respectively okay so that covers domain and range the first part of this puzzle what happened there we go all right so domain and range next thing we need to calculate this inverse so to do that we're going to rewrite this thing whoops sorry graphs of inverses all right, sorry. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna rewrite this as y is equal to the square root of x plus two minus three. Replace f of x with y so that we can actually solve for and isolate the other guy. So first thing we need is we need to move, the problem is that x is trapped under a root, so we gotta isolate that root, so we're going to add three to both sides, that'll add to zero. And if we do it to one side, we have to do it to the other. That gives us 
y is uh, y plus 3 is equal to the square root of x plus 2. How do you deal with the square root? Well, you square it away. All right, we'll square this away, and we will get y plus 3 squared really means y plus 3 times itself twice is equal to the square root of 2 is x plus 2. Uh, the square root of 2 squared is just what we had underneath the root. I've messed up all those words. The square root of the stuff underneath it squared is just the stuff underneath it. That's good enough. Okay, I'm going to distribute. Now we want to solve for x. And I could just subtract 2 from both sides right now, but I really want to distribute that y stuff just because that's how I'm used to doing math. So it won't hurt anything. Let's do it. y squared, y times y is y squared, plus 3y plus 3y gives me plus 6y and plus 9. And if you can't see that, I encourage you pause and work it out. You'll see that it gets there. Uh, and then rewrite the other side equals x plus 2. Now to truly isolate the x, we have to subtract 2. And since there are matching vertical things, we'll go ahead and do it vertically this time. Uh, now we've got y squared plus 6y plus 7 equals 2x. Switch x and y. x squared plus 6x plus 7 equals y. Label it as your inverse. f inverse of x is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 7. And yeah, you can switch the sides of things on the equation as long as you switch both sides. Imagine I took the prior line and wrote it as y equals x squared plus 6x plus 7 before I changed it into the inverse notation. All right. Now, this is quite a bit harder if, well, what's the next slide going to be about? The next slide is going to be about graphing. And this is quite a bit harder to graph than the square root that we did before. So let's pop our next page together. Let's summarize what we know so far. So I have my original graph over here. We'll do that in green. And we know the domain of this thing is negative 3 to infinity. And the range of this thing is, uh, wait a minute, I think I got that wrong. Yeah, starts at negative 2, not 3. Negative 2 to infinity. And the range is negative 3 to infinity. Now we know that the related inverse is given by the function f inverse of x equals 2x squared plus 6x plus 7. And we know the domain of this thing is the range of the other, because the inputs and outputs are reversed. So negative 3 comma infinity. And then the range is negative 2 comma infinity. OK, let's give ourselves, well, you know what's going to be a good graph for this one? Because I know this punchline here. Um, give yourself kind of something that looks like this. Maybe go, let's see, 3 in all directions, since 3 seems to be a pretty common number that's involved with all this stuff. OK, so first things first, let's put in our diagonal y equals x line, because inverses are always a reflection about this y equals x line. And now our original function, well, we know it starts at negative 2 in the x direction and negative 3 in the y direction. And, uh, and then it goes up and over 1, 1. And then it kind of curves and goes off like that. I'm just giving myself at least two solid anchor points, since we know that the square root goes to 1, 1. So from my starting point down here, I can go over, up, on 1, up, 1, and know that there's a second point on that graph. You could also just plug in negative 1 and work it out and see that it works. So now let's graph the related inverse. Well, what are these points? Um, this point is negative 2, negative 3. This point is negative 1, comma, negative 2. So what are those points going to be if we reverse them? Well, let's look at the, the negative 2, negative 3 first. Well, that's going to be negative 3 in x and negative 2. So that's going to come down here. We're going to have negative 3 and negative 2. And then negative 1 and negative 2 replaced is going to give us uh, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, comma, negative 1. And if I thought of folding that along that diagonal line, I would see that, sure enough, my inverse, we should label these, because while I've got colors, you won't always have colors. So it's a good idea to label your graphs. Um, and you should always do that. Our inverse is a reflection across that line for every point. 
Now, pause and think about this for a second, because if we had just done this problem without thinking about the domains and ranges, and we had found our original function, we graphed it like the green parabola or the green square root function, and then we took our our uh, red function, but we didn't think about any of this stuff. Well, we'll see how to graph parabolas in detail later, but if we fire, we look at that x squared and we, we suspect, hey, that thing should be a parabola, shouldn't it? It should probably do something like that. And if we did that, we would be wrong because we haven't taken into account the domain and range. Because you cannot reverse this thing, this, uh, this red function is no longer one-to-one, -one, so it doesn't have a reverse. So it's important to restrict your domains and ranges if you're reversing um, some functions. That's a bit of a tricky thing, but let me know if you have any questions. Okay, that's it as one big example of graphing inverses. Uh, to finish this up, we'll talk about how to verify whether a function is an inverse of another function.